Welcome back to our series on embedding Looker. Previously, we've given you a quick overview of Looker embedding options. So let's dive in and get you started with our first option, Looker Private Embedding. With this option, you directly manage the HTML element to embed your Looker content, and your user logs into Looker separately from your host application. We will walk through these steps. We will build the embed content URL, then create the iframe, and finally enable user access. We will embed an example of Looker dashboard content at this URL, instance.looker.com slash dashboards slash four. But feel free to use your own Looker content as we work through the steps. By the end of this video, you should have an iframe with your Looker content privately embedded. You will end up with this iframe code example or something similar. But first, a quick knowledge check. You should understand the iframe HTML element, third-party cookies, and the parts of a URL like the parameters or host name. All right, let's get started. Let's first build the embed content URL. So what is it? If you look at the iframe code sample, the embed content URL is the URL set on the iframe's source attribute. It is a modified version of your Looker content's URL. Let's look at our example embed content URL. The protocol must always be HTTPS. And outside of the protocol, the embed content URL consists of three parts, the host name, the path, and the parameters. Let's walk through how to generate each part of the embed content URL. First, let's determine the host name. It is the same as your Looker instance's host name. So looking at the URL of our example Looker content, its host name is instance.looker.com. The embed content URL's host name is the same host name, instance.looker.com. With the first part of our embed content URL completed, Let's build the next part, the path. Take your Looker content URL and identify its path. With our URL of our example Looker content, the path is slash dashboard slash four. Then prefix slash embed to it. And voila, we have the embed content URL's path. Quick caveat, if you want to embed query visualizations, check our getting started documentation linked below to build the embed content URL's path. Now, with our second part of our embed content URL completed, let's build the embed content URL's parameters. These parameters control your embed content's filtering and theming. But for now, let's just build the filter parameters in this video. Navigate to your Looker content in a browser, then manually adjust the filters on your Looker content to what you want your filters to be when your user views your embedded content. So navigating our example Looker content, we will set the time frame filter to 14 days. Now look at your resulting URL. You'll notice the manual filter adjustments set parameters on the URL. In this case, our manual filter adjustments automatically set the parameter time frame equal 14 plus day on the URL the parameter becomes the embed content URL's parameter. Now, when users view the embed, the embedded Looker content will load with the time frame filter automatically set to 14 days. With the parameters built, we finish building our embed content URL. With our hostname, path, and parameters, we have a fully formed embed content URL ready to be set on your iframe source attribute. Keep in mind, you can navigate to your embed content URL in a browser to preview your embed's behavior and appearance. Also, if you want to theme and control the appearance of your embedded Looker content, check out our getting started documentation for further details. Now, let's create the iframe for your Looker embedded content to go into. Let's say this is your host applications DOM. First, insert the iframe HTML element into the DOM. Set the iframe source attribute to the embed content URL we just built. Then 
to find the width, the height, and other attributes you need to best display your embedded Looker content. And congrats! We have now embedded Looker content inside an iframe. But we're not done yet. You need to consider how your user will access your Looker embedded content. As previously mentioned, the private embedding option requires your user to log into Looker separately from your host application. You need to keep in mind two things. How will your user log in? And what is your user's browser cookie policy? First, let's talk about how your user can log into Looker. If your user is not logged into Looker, your iframe will show a 401 unauthorized error screen. Let's avoid that. Your user can log into Looker in one of two ways. Either your user can log into Looker on the same browser before viewing the embedded content, or you can enable an optional Looker login screen inside the iframe. To do this, let's augment our previously built embed content URL. With this existing parameter of time frame equals 14 days, add the parameter allow login screen to the embed content URLs parameters and set it to true. Now your iframe will present a Looker login screen if your user is not logged into Looker beforehand. Keep in mind, the login screen does come with a couple caveats. You must disable the same origin protections for Looker login pages setting to enable the Looker login screen in your iframe. Also, if your Looker instance authenticates users via single sign-on with an identity provider, the identity provider may block the display of its login screen in the iframe. Now that we've figured out how your user can log into Looker, let's consider your user's browser cookie policy. Looker uses cookies for user authentication and session storage. Looking at our example embed content URL again, its host name is instance.looker.com. Now, say for example, your host application URL is reports.mycompany.com slash myapp. Its host name is reports.mycompany.com. If your embed content URL's host name is under a different domain from your host application, then your user's browser must enable third-party cookies. However, what if your user's browser cannot allow third-party cookies? Then you can create a custom domain for your Looker instance so your host application and your Looker instance share the same domain. You can find more information on how to do this and all these user access considerations in our Getting Started documentation. All right, we're done. Congrats. We have walked through the Looker private embedding option together. We built the embed content URL, created the iframe element, and enabled your user's access to the embedded content. With that, we have privately embedded Looker content in an iframe. So check out our Getting Started documentation for more details on using our private embedding option. And after that, we recommend you look into SSO embedding with the embed SDK. Both are linked in the description below. Look forward to more videos in this series where we get you started with embedding Looker. See you next time.